Hello everyone, this is module 3 in the lecture on plain language writing, drafting and structuring your documents. So this module is going to be focusing on tips and a chat about your assessment 3 which is your file note and letter. Just um, bringing us back to that cartoon clip that we had in module 2 about how we boil down all those words and phrases and um, in a convoluted way so we get a much more concise document. Just sort of keep that focus on not using unnecessary words. So a number of tips. Make sure every word is, it counts, that it's punchy. Um, there's a couple of um, important points on slide four and namely that is it's all about the reader. The audience so you is a very important focus you attended our office you provided the following instructions colon bullet point or a b c um, use your structure and make sure that it is directed um, to that audience please don't use the word it is noted it's a very overused phrase and quite unnecessary is it something that adds any weight to the document? Not really. Um, you instructed as follows, one, two, three. Again, part of the um, using the passive and the active voice. So a tip is 80 to 90% of your sentence should in fact be in the active voice. So have a look at it, go back and read it. Sometimes it's good to get a third party who um, may be a family, a friend, get them to read your file note or your letter to see if they make sense of what you're going to say. Now this is another um, thing that we love to do as lawyers. We love to use nominalizations where um, we use lots of words like the advancement of rather than just advance. Making an introduction rather than just introduce. Uh, making a decision rather than decide. So have a think about that when you are in your initial drafting stage and you put down um, your first draft, you'll probably do a lot of passive voice, you'll probably use nominalizations, go back and this is the, the difficult part, go back to turn your drafting around so it is clear concise language. So I've got a couple of examples here um, of sentences. So the first one, if the board holds a meeting on Friday, it will probably come to the conclusion that the time has come to take action. Nothing wrong with that, but let's turn it around um, and see if we can make it a little bit punchier, a little bit con more concise. Same effect though. So if the board meets on Friday, it will probably conclude that the time has come to act. A bit cleaner, a bit more concise, says the saying. What about this on slide 7? The Minister has given consideration to the representations of Mr X in the matter of the right of way through his property and has come to the decision. Let's turn it around. Let's think of how we can use the words more effectively how we can phrase it in a way that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more concise, that's going to have the same result. The Minister has considered Mr X's letter about the right of way through his property and has decided, much cleaner, much more concise, um, not as many words. And I know that there is Latin still taught in some schools and I know we learn some Latin in law school and we know some expressions that are part of our vocabulary, particularly with mens rea, actus reus in the criminal sense, reus ipsa loquita, facts speak for themselves, so but a dictum, um, even re, re, in letters, are they necessary? Well, no, they're not. And does your client uh, need you to write in Latin to them? Certainly not. The client isn't going to know um, what uh, you're talking about and it's of no use to them if uh, they're being bamboozled by by Latin. I like that little cartoon, it sort of says the point very clear. Now slide 9 talks about time words and this is a big thing um, when you are drafting particularly orders that are going to be approved by the court because when you are dra drafting consent orders or terms of settlement 
or orders in any court document, what you are wanting to happen is that they can be enforced. And so to assist in making an order um, enforceable means that you identify what needs to be done and you do it in a very clear, concise way. So think about if you need something done by a certain time that you bring it back to a point in time. It might be at the date of this agreement something's going to happen. Or you might be that the husband's going to transfer to the wife um, an asset within 14 days from the date of this agreement. There's a time frame, there's certainty as to when it's going to happen. Or it might be by a time period on a certain day. No point saying by 30 June, need to have a time frame. The more certainty, um, the, the, the greater clarity then more likely that there's not going to be issue with enforcement of an order. So bear that in mind, really is very important. There are a lot of overused and unnecessary words and I'm certainly going to be um, the one who puts up my hand to says that I have more times than I can remember drafted letters that end with please not hesitate to contact the writer should you have any queries or concerns in relation to your matter. It just flows off um, my tongue like no tomorrow. You don't need it. Um, now I just put in my letters to clients. Please contact me if you have any questions. We refer to previous correspondence in this matter. I know that that's a tried way of starting correspondence and that many of you who if you've worked in law firms will in fact um, see that as the starting point of all letters. Please um, refrain from doing that, particularly if it's after a first conference where there actually hasn't been any previous correspondence. So you need to think about the context that it's in. Are you referring to a conference on a certain date? Um, are you thanking them for the letter that a client has um, provided to you? Have you? Are you referring to a telephone um, call with a client? Are you referring to a letter um, or questions that have been asked and you're going to answer those specifically? Um, be mindful of that. Also as a tip for your drafting, the usual practice is that you, you would use the word I if it is from a sole practitioner. So I refer to our conference on such and such a day. Now, if it is from a firm, the general practice is we. We refer to our conference on such and such a day. Um, slide 11 is just a fun one about uh, uh, having a go at us as lawyers and how we don't draft very clear. Shall is on the way out. I know that shall is a word that we all like to use. Um, but it's, uh, it's not seen as adding any benefit. And the, um, the, the trend is that if you are going to require a word that is enforceable, um, then use the word must where appropriate. Now, slide 13 and 14, um, it's just a, a comparison of letters A and B, just to give you an idea. So when you first look at at letter A, there's lots of words there. The re, first of all, do you need re? Um, you'll see some firms have abandoned it completely. Usually the smaller suburban, small city, country firms still have it by way of a practice. But look at that, look at the subject matter. It's underlined, it's in bold, too much information. The subject matter needs to be clear and crisp and lots of words going on there. So you're going to have a lot of reading and the, all, the audience is going to have to really decipher what's going on. And if you go to letter B, much simpler, and look at the subject matter. Smith and Brown purchased from Wilkinson. Much, much clearer and concise. Um, acting for the purchaser, enclosing undertakings, client made an application for finance. Now this isn't the be all and end all, but it's just trying to give you an example of how when less words are used and consideration is to what really are you trying to say it can be much more effective to the to the reader um, the audience I'm sure would prefer letter B that is going to be much more concise than letter A with lots of words that don't mean anything but I'm just going to talk a little uh, for a moment about the file note which is your assessment three and then the letter 
The file note is an assessment task that is going to be new to most of you, I anticipate. You will be given a fact scenario and you will then be asked to draft a letter um, having regard to that fact scenario. So it's as though you are parachuted into the fact scenario, which is a conference with a client, and you are sitting there and you are making file notes. It is very important to think before you just start drafting the file note. Make sure you look at the criteria on the feedback sheet. And there are key things that we're wanting you to identify. Who is your client? Question number one. You need to identify who would be the client in the matter. And then what would you be retained or the firm being retained to do? What are the services you are being asked to do for that particular client? What is the retainer? Now there are a number of matters that are very important to go through in the engagement management list. Now that engagement management list is in the learning and reading guide which is online and there are some other excellent resources including the Law Society's chapter on managing the engagement with the client. Ultimately what I'm trying to get you to think about and the, the purpose of the assessment task is to get you focused on what are your concerns. There are going to be more questions than answers in the file note. Um, why do you have concerns and what do you need to address your concerns? This actually isn't a legal problem solving exercise and unlike what you may have dealt with in your core and elective subjects, there may be no specific answer in any book that you're going to um, go and research or to look at or to any of the resources that are online. What it is, it's a thinking exercise. What's going on here? I need to pull apart, unpack what's happening. What am I being retained to do? And who am I being asked to act on behalf of? Namely, who will the retainer be with? When would the engagement commence? What's the importance of being able to identify that? What ethical concerns am I worried about and why? why? What is it that I'm feeling apprehensive about? And what do I need to address that? Importantly, don't make assumptions. It's very easy in practice to make assumptions, but it does lead to lots of difficulties and our whole focus as a legal practitioner is to identify concerns, unpack them, and what do we need to address concerns. File notes are a risk management tool. Law cover, um, and I think there's, going, there's a lecture from Janice Purvis online, and Janice Purvis is the manager of the practice support um, unit for education. And um, what Janice says is file notes are absolutely critical. And what law cover does when anyone complains about solicitors, the first thing they do is ask the solicitor for their file and what they're looking for is all the file notes and the records of what has actually happened in that file. So there's no magic to a, an actual file note what it looks like. Um, I have file notes made on bits of paper, backs of envelopes, sticky notes. Um, I have text messages from clients that I send to myself as an email and I then print it off and put it on my file. But there are key pieces of information that need to be recorded in a file note, such as the matter name, the date, including the year, the time taken, what was the start time, what was the end time, important from a cost perspective. Um, and it's important to, to then reference back. And you can say, well, I spent you know, 10 minutes with the client, I spent an hour with the client, or I might have been in conference for three hours. What was the activity? Were you doing some research? Were you at court, for example? And was there any other person involved? And don't think that if you make a phone call um, and you don't get an answer that you shouldn't record it. In fact, the opposite is true. So if I ring a client and they don't answer and it goes to voicemail, I make a note that I rang the client at the time and the date and that it went to voicemail. Um, if you leave a message with um, somebody at their home or at the office, again, I spoke to Mr. Smith's secretary, uh, advised her A, B, C and date and time. 
how long you were on the phone for. You might be able um, to record things on, a, on, on your phone by way of text or email. Again, make sure that, I know that it's, 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 many firms are paperless, but certainly Law Cover's advice is that it should be printed out and it should be put on to the file so that the file has um, a complete record of all matters associated with that particular matter. Identify in your file note what you're recording, instructions received, and don't forget this is your file note. So importantly for your file note, what observations are you making for your client, for, for your client, and why are you making them? What is it that's concerning you about the client? Is it that the client has English as a second language? Is it that the client um, seems vague? Uh, is it that the client um, seems um, uh, compelled to enter into a transaction that wouldn't be to their advantage or to of any benefit? What, what's the concern and what do you need to have addressed? Now there are um, pro forma file notes um, that are online and you can see I think there's a law cover one as well as one in the learning and reading guide just to give you an outline as to what it looked like but there's no magical um, uh, look of a file note it really is what's embodied in the document is how you use structure for that um, for that purpose so don't write sentences um, think of using your headings think of using bullet points and subparagraphs or numbers breaking it up because as you're writing probably notes on this lecture or in other lectures that you've attended to you don't write sentences you write um, abbreviated notes of matters that you think are important and that's really what a file note is. So every time you sit in a lecture theatre and you take notes, you're making a file note. Um, and again, just think of it from that perspective of who's going to be able to pick a file. Now the purpose of a letter, um, it's all about conveying information, maybe obtaining information, putting something on the record. You might be obtaining instructions or confirming instructions, making a request of someone to do something. It needs to be clear and concise what it is the writing about. So when you're drafting a letter make sure that you um, have a proper letterhead that's going to be part of the criteria. Even if it's going to be by email it uh, and most firms will do this is that, they, that the letter is on the letterhead sent by email but then is attached by way of a PDF. But it needs to be addressed properly proper and the correct salutation and the spelling of someone's name and the subject matter. Think of the examples of the subject matter previously. What's the purpose and importantly who is the audience? So with the letter to the client you need to make sure that um, you identify the client's instructions, that there is a logical sequence and some structure to your letter, um, that it's reader friendly the way that it's laid out and if there is things to be done that that's um, set in a clear and nice way. Importantly with letter writing um, ethics comes into the fray again. Don't use unprofessional abusive or defamatory language and certainly don't threaten criminal action to enforce a civil claim. Don't lie, don't put a case on behalf of your client that has no reasonable legal basis. And certainly, um, seeking legal costs in a letter of demand, you need to consider whether that's et ethical at all. Now, the final point that I want to make with um, letter writing and drafting is that it is a personal style and you will um, find and be exposed to many different styles when you um, enter into practice. And you may have to write in a different way for different people because they like certain things written in a certain way. You will develop your own style but the purpose of drafting from a PLT point of view is to get you thinking about how to structure documents properly, how to use plain language and um, produce a, a letter document that has the reader or the audience foremost in, in your mind as the focus. And that's the um, end of the uh, third module of plain language. Just remember the couple of last points which I think this one's um, an interesting one from Albert Einstein. Any fool can make things bigger, more complex and more violent. 
It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction, make things simpler, less complex, think like a wise man but communicate in the language of the people. And that's the end of the third module. Thank you.